Well, joining us now, we've got uh, members of Almogordo's cross-country team, both the boys and the girls' side, and their head coach, uh, Justin Giggler, is here with us. And we'll run down the line and let you know who's here with us. Uh, Michael Robinson on the boys' side, Sean Malloy, both seniors this year, uh, Kyla Fugate. Kyla, what are you this year? I'm a sophomore. She's a sophomore, okay. And then Alexandra Adams, also a senior this year. So uh, Kyla's the, the youngster <laughs> in, in the group this uh, t- today. Uh, coach? Let's talk about last year. You guys uh, qualified both teams for state, second for the girls' side at uh, district, third for the boys. Um, how how did you feel like in terms of expectations going into the year you felt like the team performed uh, in 2014? You know, moving into our new district and not really uh, knowing any of the new teams and not really seeing any of them until later in the, s- the season, I thought we did really, really well. You know, I always have a expectation to finish first, second, or third and qualify two teams for state. And the girls finished, uh, like you said, second place. That was pretty good. The boys had a tough run to finish third, and we're just looking to capitalize on that this year. Guys, uh, we'll start with uh, you, Sean. I mean, what were? is there a time that you're looking forward to improve to this season? I mean, how do you feel like maybe you're better prepared heading into your senior year than previous years in the cross-country team? Well, you know, honestly, this year I'm trying to go and break the 17 mark because, you know, coaches issued that challenge to all the boys this year. And uh, more prepared in the fact that we've seen the teams now and we know what we're up against. And we'll probably see them a bit more this year than we did last year. So that'll help a lot in knowing what we're up against. Michael, how's your preparation heading into the season? I know you, I've seen you guys out there running all summer long, uh, especially out there in the heat. Uh, how do you feel like your preparation heading into this year has been going? Yeah, running to that heat is pretty killer, but it all makes it makes us all mentally tougher. So we're going to go into the races way stronger mentally and then all the experience from all the seniors that we have this year is going to have a lot of effect on the way we perform. Kyla, how about you? I'm, I'm sure you've been out there running all summer. Get, get a little bit closer on the mic there for me. Um, how, how has the preparation for the year been going for you? Um, yeah, so far it's been pretty good. I haven't been to a lot of practices, but when we have, it's been pretty pretty good for us, and especially with our new coach, Dylan. He, um, he pushes us really hard, and he gives us some hard workouts, but it's all going to pay off, obviously. Alexandra, you had a great year last year running for the team, and you and you were kind of a, a newbie to the cross country last year because you know you, we'd seen you a lot out at track and field and and things like that. And then last year you really came on uh, in cross country. How do you feel like heading into this year and your senior year? You're prepared going into the season. Self determination is my goal. Um, last year, yes, it's so true. I didn't even expect to do that good, but I did good. Um, I'm just trying to mentally prepare myself for this year. Um, hopefully, I can get into a really good college I'm looking at I'm trying to get scholarships and um, I want to break 19 I, I want to do that and um, for cross country it's definitely a self um, mental state thing you have to push yourself and really run your hardest and just focus yourself really good and self-determination is is my goal and that's how I run really good so Absolutely. I don't know cool yeah. coach um Let's talk about you know the, the the teams we've obviously we heard from Sean and Michael on the boys side. Uh, it, it takes five uh, as a team to be able to to win district, win state. Uh, who are some of the other guys you're expecting to uh, to be uh, competitive for you out there this year? Some guys on the on the boys side, you know, definitely we got uh, Zion Tam who couldn't be here today. He had a family obligation, but you know, he's always been one of our top guys. Jason Ald, you know, definitely. I mean, he he kind of came on last year. He kind of didn't have any experience and was definitely one of our uh one of our top five guys and really stepped up in track you know running a 203 204 800 is a really challenging thing to do and he's been looking great you know we got uh casey campbell's another senior who's going to help us Stephen power carson alzaba you know that's pretty much what i'm looking at to be my top seven right now have this many seniors going into the year i mean you've got a lot of upperclassmen that are going to be running for you guys and i, I gotta think it's going to add some competition because those guys want to be in, on the top five and they want to be on those state teams going on to later in the year, right? They really do, and th- thankfully, I think uh, most of the senior boys have really stepped up, and they're that's where they are right now. I mean, I can't think of any senior boys right now who are. I can think of a couple, one or two senior boys that are sitting outside, you know, really looking in. So, you're right, that competition will uh, hopefully breed some success for them. How about the girls' side? We talked to Alexander, who's a senior. Kyle is a sophomore. What, what's the group like looking, looking like this year? Because Kaylin, of course, graduated last year. She was uh, one of your top runners. And uh, what what is the rest of the, the makeup of the team looking like for you? The rest of the makeup for the girls looks looks great. We have Ansley Battle. Um, we have um, Cheyenne Drake's going to come run for us. You know, we worked with her. I worked with her at Mountain View in the mile. You know, he's a five thirty miler. Um, Angel Curio is another one that I can think of off the top of my head. That is. Really, those five are super solid. Amanda Heredia, and uh, that's a good six right there. And so we're looking to see who can step up for that seventh spot. 
I, I always add when, I, when we get cross country kids in for athlete of the week. I mean, it's one of those things that you know, it's running is traditionally an individual sport, but there's something about cross country that it's such a team sport. How do you guys, you know, look at the team aspect of it when you're out there running? Sean, I'll ask you that one. Uh, well, one of the things that's important in a cross country race is you have to know who you're with and you have to be close to them. So it's more of a everyone calls it a team sport, but really when you're out there running with your team, it's more of a family. It's more of like a family activity because you have to go out there and you have to trust who you're with and you have to be able to make, like we'll go and we'll make we'll be making moves on the course and you don't even have to talk because you can just like almost read each other's minds. And once the team gets to that point in the season, everything just starts to fall into place and that's really what, you can see that in the season. As it goes by, you get more closer and you get, it becomes more of a team and more of a family and that really just helps to fall into place and that's when you see your time start to drop in your team places because you start getting trophies and you know that's always fun. Absolutely. Michael, I mean, talk about the important importance of having chemistry, you know, being able to work with the, the guys out there on the, on the course with you. I mean, how important is that when, you know, to have a good relationship with your other teammates? Yeah, no, it's super important because when you're actually running, you're pushing yourself to your utmost limit as hard as you can. And being able to compete with your teammates that you've competed with all year long in practice and also being able to have them to push you, you know, if you start falling behind, they can just grab your jersey and push you a little bit and that's definitely helpful in a race being able to use each other not only to strategic reasons on the course but for mental reasons and emotional reasons yeah kyle i mean how would you view in terms of how you work with your teammates out there on on a course uh, in a race um i try to stay with people that i know that are my times like ansley ansley and me are very good friends so i know we run around the same time so if she's gonna go out fast i'll try to keep up with her or if i'm ahead of her she'll try to keep up with me and it's just back and forth like that Allie, we try to keep up with her but of course she's always faster than us <laughs> so hopefully we'll try to be up there with her this year but i mean if not it's cool so. yeah Ali, I mean, in terms of, you know, out there, I mean, you, you obviously you're competing against your, your teammates to a point, but you guys, you know, want to work together and make sure you can finish well out there. How do you look at uh, how you run out there? I actually like Kyla. She has a friend. I met a girl named Niasia, and I don't know what team she's going to be on, but we have, we have really good um, communication, so we run together sometimes, and um, I have always been in single races, like, in track and stuff, so when I came to cross country, I'm learning that, you know, we have to start working as teams and start running with other people and groups and stuff. And um, last year, I actually was running with Angel, and um, I talked her through everything while we were racing and stuff, and she said it really helped her when I was, like, talking to her and stuff while we were running, so... That's great. That's Actually in a race, so... Yeah, that's yeah. great. I mean, that's one of those things, I mean, I, I don't think enough people respect, you know, how much you all work together out there on the courses. I mean, it's... It's one of those things. If you're not, you have never ran cross country. It's probably not something you would know about, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Let me go ahead and bounce off of something that Ali was saying. You know, as far as our conditioning, you know, having Niaja out has really helped her on her course running, because that's kind of her Ali's weak spot has always been. Is when we get when we run the miles, you know, we run in we run an interval. She's like, she kills it every time, you know. And so if she if Niaja can push her on those those courses, you know, that's that that much faster you guys going to be. You know, and you know, as you talked about Angel, Angel's been had a tremendous summer. You know, and it, yeah, she's running hard. Yeah, yeah, and so, you know, I, just the fact that we can push each other, we we look up to each other, and you know, like like Sean said, it's that that family aspect. You know, that when we have a bad day, that there's somebody there, you know, that's gonna push us or take our spot or whatever, just to make sure that we we are where we're supposed to be. Well, I also think, you know, it seems that both the boys and girls teams work together. I mean, you guys are out there running every day, especially when you guys are in training. Um, you know, that's got to be another thing that you've got all these different kids. Uh, you know, how many did you have uh, come out for uh, for tryouts uh, earlier this I week? I think uh, we had 38 kids uh, show up for at least one or more practices this year. Um, I don't know where that number sits with last year, but this, this year's weird because the way school started. I probably got, you know, 15 kids I haven't seen that have told me they want to do it that – haven't been out even though mandatory practices started last week. <laughs> they just don't know because they, we, you know, I don't have that kind of contact or relationship with them yet. So I, you never know what you're going to get, but I like what I have. I'm very confident what we have here. And the numbers certainly could go up as school starts as well. So. Hope so. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> more, <laughs> more the merrier. Yeah, I always like having more kids out there. Uh, let's talk about the uh, the home course coming up this year. You guys uh, ran out at uh, Mountain View last year. This year, you're switching back over to Griggs Park, where you ran a couple years ago. Uh, how would you describe the course? Because I'm sure you're the one who's setting it up, right? Tough. Tough? <laughs> yeah. But right now, uh, with all this rain we've had, you know, it's dig- dug some pretty big channels in our uh, 
our paths so we kind of got to fix those but yeah it's it's tough the elevation change is, is um, something we have to deal with there's a lot more climb in this course you know a lot more uh, uh, parts in the course where uh, you don't backtrack on like at uh, Mountain View last year the first and last mile were the same so you kind of knew what, what it was going to feel like in the end but now everything's a little bit different there's no overlap at all and it, it, it's tough we've been out there all last week and trying to do some work on the course and everybody's comments are it, it's going to be a tough course yeah. Allie, how would you describe the course that uh, you guys have been practicing on? When we ran the course for the first time, I had a lot of fun with it. i got to say that. I am ready for the challenge. <laughs> That's all i got to say. Kyla, how about you? What, what, do, what do you think of the uh, the course out there? Oh, geez. Um, the course last year, I didn't actually run it, but it looked like it was horrible because it was super <laughs> hot outside. <laughs> and I imagine this one will be the same. Also, the huge uphill on Fairgrounds Road, is we have to climb up that. Yeah. And so that it's going to be a little bit of a challenge, but... I think we can handle it, especially because we're the ones training on it. So I think we're going to have the advantage on this one. Yeah. Michael, how about you? I mean, you guys have been out there working on it. Do you feel like you know, obviously you guys will have a little bit of an advantage of the fact that you've been running on it and yeah. the, the, the folks have to come in and, and run it for the first time, right? Yeah. Well, actually, two years ago when I did run it, <coughs> I thought I had tendonitis, but I actually had a fractured ankle. Oh, man. And I competed on it and ran an entire 5K, and it was the most painful experience of my life. <laughs> and it was not fun. <laughs> So that was the most recent memory I've had of that course, and hopefully it's got to be better this year. It can't get worse than that. <laughs> I was going to say, I, you, you hopefully don't have a fractured ankle, so you'll be good. <laughs> yeah, to go, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, how about you? Uh, you know, it's a tough course, but in all honesty, I think it's a PR course. You know, you can get a new record time in because, you know, it's uphill for the first mile, but after that you're really running downhill for most of the time. So I just think uh, whenever you're pushing yourself against your teammates and especially against your opponents wanting you know that challenge to win, especially on your home course, that home field advantage, I think there's going to be a lot of uh, Alma Roto runners setting records on it. Yeah. And it's also, I mean, one thing that we, we should mention is that you guys get one home meet a year, one chance for the, the home fans to come out and, and watch you guys here locally. And, you know, you guys want to see as many folks out there to come out and watch, right, Coach? Oh, definitely. You know, it's, uh, it's an interesting spectator sport. You know, a lot of people come out there and they – hear the gunfire and they watch it for the first two minutes and they get to watch it for the last two minutes but you know honestly what happens in between between those 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 four minutes is amazing you know you, you never know you know I, I remember last year with Allie in her second race or no her first race in El Paso we had her in JV because we didn't know where to put her and she ran the third fastest girls time that day you know it's like oh okay now we know a little better so we never know the the miracle that's going to happen between between those uh between those three miles and it's a uh, something that's great to watch and I know I know these kids will tell you, I mean, this year's summer has been a lot harder than last year's summer. Our, our intensity in workouts, our distance in workouts, we ramped it up a notch, and that's just to prepare for what we have lying ahead of us this year. But, yeah, as far as spectators, we're, we're looking forward to anybody who can come out. You know, we always in, encourage our teachers and families to come out. So any community members that want to be there, we would be happy to uh, host them as well. Absolutely. We'd love to see them out there. Um, talk about the season overall in terms of the, the schedule. A little bit different than the last couple of years because you guys are trying to run a little bit more out in the eastern part of the state to where you'll see some of the district opponents, right? That's right. Um, uh, this is the first year I can think of in a long time we don't have a uh, El Paso meet at all. You know, and uh, we run at Gadsden first. Just that, that's just a couple of weeks away, but, you know, I, I don't think any Texas teams are coming there. I don't think any Texas teams are coming to our home meet. So we're not really going to see a whole lot of those those uh, schools from Texas. But you're right. I mean, we picked up Carlsbad this year. Um, the main reason we picked that up is because District is hosted by Carlsbad. And uh, having knowledge of that course, you know, since none of us has run it, I've never seen it as a coach or an athlete here. So seeing that, you know, is going to make a huge amount of difference in experiencing that. You know, I know last year, going into Clovis, we all expected flat, and uh, it wasn't. It was surprising. <laughs> there was a pr pretty beast hill. It was about a half mile long, about a about uh, halfway into the race, and it was like, holy goodness, we weren't ready for this. So our goal this year is uh, no surprises, and I think we'll we'll be all right. You know, we got Pecos Valley, of course, again, uh, going to see Hobbs and Arte going to Hobbs and Artesia again. So, yeah, anytime we can get back east and see our district schools, it's a good thing. Yeah. I don't know. Have you guys had a chance to look at the schedule? Are there are there some courses that you you know that you've liked to run over the last couple of years? I mean, Sean, is there one that you look at? You know, Pecos Valley or Carlsbad or any of those that you've had a chance? Oh uh, yeah. Uh, well, this is my third year, so you know, I've gone. We have a couple of courses that we always go to, in like Roswell and Rideau. So in uh, my first year running, actually, Roswell ended up being three and a half miles. So that kind of threw everybody off. But last year, a lot of people were sent PRs because it kind of fixed it. And, you know, Ridos is always a fun challenge because, you know, it's the elevation. It has a big hill. But overall, I'm looking forward to uh, more to, like, the Carlsbad and the out east because they always have, like, beautiful courses on golf courses and all that. 
and it's, it's a chance to get to see our opponents before we have to face them like in the real time. Michael, is there one maybe a favorite race that you've run? I mean, because that's what kind of cool thing about cross country is you get to go to all these individual places out there. Is there one that maybe jumps out at you that you see on the schedule this year or even in your previous years? Yeah, I'd say Hobbs is definitely by far my favorite. It's really grassy, really beautiful, and there is gophers everywhere, which is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> It's a good. That's a good. That's a good reason to like it. Kyle, yeah. is there one, or one of course that jumps out at you, or is there not in particular that you can think of that's uh, that's out there? Um, I like the Roswell course because it's nice and cool outside, and it's not like running in super hot weather is really horrible. I don't know if anyone if for on this <laughs> listening to this understands that, but it's especially hard, especially running three miles. But that one has to be my favorite because everyone PR'd that day. And it was really fun. <laughs> Allie, I mean, you talk about, like, Coach talked about last year in El Paso how well you did in your, your first meet down there. Uh, did you like that course, or is there one last year that maybe jumped it out at you? Me. But there is one, but I can't really think of what it was. But we were we were in the woods, and then there was, like, this water part where you, like, go over the bridge. I don't remember what that That's one was. That's got to be Redoso. Yeah. Yeah, that Redoso. One, yeah, that one was really fun, I thought. Yeah. I, I, that's the thing I think is cool about cross country is, I mean, you guys – it's it's so unique pretty much every time you go out there. That's uh, that's pretty cool. All right, well, let's talk about expectations uh, this year. We'll start with you guys. I mean, expectation, Allie, what, what do you want to get to time-wise before the end of your season? Um, probably, um, I don't know an exact time, but I want to be in the 18s. Okay. Kyle, how about you? What are you shooting for before the end of the season? Um, definitely to break 20 because last year I was around 21, and I know Coach wants five of us to on varsity to at least break 20. So hopefully we can do that, and hopefully Allie can step up and break, get her time too so we can have a better team. All right. Michael, how about you? Uh, I've always wanted to break my older brother's record of 1751, but Coach has challenged us all to break 17 this year. So that's basically that, the goal. That's cool. And I know, Sean, you mentioned that earlier. Seven, getting under 17 yeah, is your uh, main goal this year. Yeah. Uh, 1640 would be a good time for me just – you know, trying to get that down, trying to see if we can get everybody under that. Because if you get five people under 17, that's a district title. That's competing for state. Yeah, absolutely. So. Coach, what what are the expectations for these groups this year? Uh, you, we mentioned earlier you feel like the, both these teams can compete for district. Oh, absolutely. You know, I think the girls definitely, you know, what the progression we saw on track and field when, when they came to our house and we finished second through fifth in the, in the mile, the girls' mile. It's like, yeah, we got them next year. And then, you know, seeing that – that they didn't just give up. And like, oh yeah, Ooh, we peaked. They put some work in. They look great. The girls look great. I'm I'm really excited. I think they really can compete for a district title. And if we can compete for a district title, I think this year the way things are stacking up, they can compete for a state title. Just the way that 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 state's kind of stacking up is a little bit different this year. Just kind of some some upper talent that were senior ladies has really uh, have graduated, and so I think there's a real opportunity for us to to do something special on the girls' side. And for on the boys' side, it's it's, it's coming down to you know. Do we have enough work in to come with Hobbs? Hobbs was second place team last year, you know, and and we we'll find out uh, at Carl's bad, you know, where we really stand. But I really feel that we can run with Hobbs. And a second team place at state is a tremendous accomplishment because it hasn't been done in a, like something like 16, 20 years for a team that from the southern part of the state has placed at state and cross country. So I I hope that you know Hobbs' success, you know, really opens the door for all the other southern teams down here. And so I, I look forward to a, a great year with some really high expectations. But so far, I'll be honest, they've, they've risen up and have, have met all my summer expectations so far. Awesome. Are you guys uh, still doing the fun run uh, 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 fundraiser this year for you guys? We are. We had to move it just because of the way that school stacked up, you know. So we'll, we'll end up doing that in October. But this Friday we gave them a – we're going to do kind of a black and gold two-mile scrimmage against our teams. Really help the new kids understand how we score cross country and, you know, showing them how we have to run for each other and all that stuff, you know. And so we gave them some really difficult two-mile times to uh, try to accomplish. And so we asked them to go out and pledge in the community, and, you know, people would donate a two amounts if they meet the time or if they don't make that time. So now they have a incentive, incentive, financial incentive to do well for the team. All right, awesome. Well, we'll look forward to seeing all these, uh, all these fine kids out there running throughout the season. And, uh, Coach, uh, good luck uh, on the year. Thanks for having us.